Tom here from Lawrence Systems and Unify has released their updated controller version 6.4.54 a few days ago and good news it's boring. So today is September 22nd 2021 and I've been running it for a little bit and nothing happened which is exactly what I want. It just worked. So I can't say nothing happened it actually functioned but nothing as exciting as the 6.2 series where there were like a release every week to fix a bug or fix some type of leaking memory problem that was causing some drama. Uh, uh, this update seems to have gone smooth and my server after running it for several days didn't crash. I also reached out to Riley Chase over at Hostify and this is his cool fancy dashboard and Riley runs way more Unify servers than anyone I know. Currently he has 1,943 of them. He's currently has most of them live on 6.26. And that was the version, if you recall, there were several small incremental releases to fix all kinds of little quirkiness of getting it to work right. That didn't seem to happen, and Riley confirmed this so far. The rollout and the testing has gone well for version 6.54. I know it's a lot of people ask, and they you know tweet at me, tweet at Riley, uh, tweet at Chris over at Crosstalk Solutions, who covers this as well. But it's good that, yes, the uh, update has gone pr fairly smooth so far. But I will cover some of the changes, some of the UI things that were modified and I think look nicer and still some of the pain things that are, well, everything to do with that new UI. And I'm not sure why they just keep kind of incrementally putting some things in new UI and leaving some things in the old UI and not just going one or the other. So we have to go back and forth because that doesn't make it easier. Good news is there's really not much you have to do in the new UI. There's only maybe a few things you may have to go, but for the most part, everything works in the old UI well enough that you can do the day-to-day -day management. I, I'm still really puzzled by doing that, but before I get too off topic, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, including Unify Consulting or Network Design, there is a hires button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on channel. Among those products and services, if you don't like dealing with updates, that's what Riley's good at. That's what Hostify is good at. And Hostify will take care of all those updates for you. They do manage controllers on there. I do have an offer code for Hostify down below. All right, on to the changes. This is their official page for the Unify Network application. They don't call it the Unify Network software defined controller anymore. So kind of interesting that little bit of name change and actually down here is something funny. Uh, it's not called beta. We call it Unify Labs now. Little minor changes on here. And actually that's good news. There's just a lot of little minor changes in here when they say improvements. I don't really think that's too big of a deal. And it's kind of nice just to have an update that has a lot of bug fixes in it without any uh, major changes that are sweeping and break a lot of different things. But one of the things I will cover right off the top is the first one they have. It's called Add Optimize IoT Wi-Fi Connectivity Field for Wi-Fi Configuration. And this is kind of the problem sometimes with Unify updates is they're not clear on what they're doing because there are two different forum posts here that I'll leave links to. What does Optimize IoT Wi-Fi Connectivity actually do? And uh, yeah, there's not bunch of responses from Unify clarifying what that does. Now, there is responses of what changes in there. And actually, let's look at that actual change. And let's show you how that change conflicts with this change over here. Updated default DTIM period from one uh, or two, one for 2.4 gigahertz. Now, the transmission period is what they're talking about. That's what people figured out that it does on the DTIM transfer. But if you actually want to go in here and we'll look at the settings. I'm on the new UI and we're going to go ahead and add a new Wi-Fi network. If you go to advanced, we can see that the optimized IoT for Wi-Fi connectivity is there. And this is where things get a little bit confusing because that doesn't exist if I would have done this in the old UI. And the DTAM, if you look, is set to one automatically. So why do I need to check that box if it's set there automatically? A little bit confusing, so maybe we'll get some clarification later. Uh, you because you maybe will come up with a page that actually has a write-up for what that does. But for now, we're kind of left just guessing as what it does. 
Now, a lot of these things here, I'm gonna skip over because we don't use with our clients any USGs or Unified Dream Machines. We do consulting and we know people who have them, but it's not something that we actively deploy to any of the clients we manage. So I'm not really gonna dive deep into any of the different UDM, UDM Pro or USG changes that are on here. There are some changes on here, but it's not a product we really recommend. Some people have asked me, Tom, you're kind of bashing on it and I'm like, it's not about bashing, it's about being honest that the product itself is very simple and doesn't have a ton of advanced use cases. So if you are a more advanced user, you will find that the uh, routing equipment from Unify is not all that great. If you are a home user, it is probably substantially better than what you may find off the shelf at some big box store, but that's kind of how I look at these. So that's something we use a lot. And same thing because Riley Chase does Hostify, and host Unify controllers. If you were using a Dream Machine, you have to use the controller on like a Dream Machine. So his knowledge comes from the same as mine, managing uh, the devices themselves for the switching and access points, but not so much with the different routing equipment. So they do have they do have a lot of fixes on the routing equipment, which is nice. And things like improving WAN failover notification, improve application startup stability. Uh, that probably has more to do with stability issues. I've seen people complaining about an error because honestly, startup has not been an issue for a long time in terms of the Unify controller. I, I think the last time I had startup problems was probably long before version five. So uh, I'm assuming that's where that's at because I know some people have had to reload uh, some of their dream machines to get that working properly just from consulting we've done on p helping people with that. Uh, improved dashboard drop down styling for smaller screens. I think this is something that confused me. And let's show you what happens when we're looking at a device. So if we go over here to the Unify devices and let's take a switch right here, like the studio switch. And we go here to settings and I want to modify a port. I was confused and uh, the scroll bar is just kind of tiny to me and it doesn't display much. It's got this kind of narrow view. Let me show you what that view is on there. So first I was like, oh, why can't I see my other networks? Are they just missing? No, I can scroll wheel or grab the tiny little scroll and go. But if we go back over to the classic UI, that's handled differently. So go here, classic settings. Yeah, deactivate this ugly interface that is not complete. <laughs> go here and then grab any switch, click on a port, and we want to edit a port and look at that same pull down. It's got all my ports in there. I don't know how they thought that was better. Um, not giving me, I mean, I guess if you were doing this on a really small screen, I was managing my Unify uh, controller and logging in from a phone. I would like that on there, but that's what things like responsive design solve. Having a single UI that's responsive to the different screen sizes. It's not... Um, it, it, it didn't help me at all because it's a little bit confusing. I like to be able to have all these different pull downs right here. So I think this looks better and is easier to do still on the old UI, but hey, they have this idea of the new UI. Also, if you notice when I'm in the old UI, these are still pop outs so I can move them around, which makes it really handy if you want to take like this switch and another switch. These two aren't the same, but you get the idea and do some comparisons like where ports are on two switches and set them side by side. We we'll jump back over to the new UI, user interface. Go ahead and apply some changes. Let's go back over to the devices and uh, nope, doesn't seem to be able to pop that out. This sits here. So what happens when we open up another one or another one or another one, it just switches between them and doesn't let me go through and pop these out as windows. Like I said, this is some of those trying to push that new UI, but it, it doesn't even have some of the features of the old UI type thing that makes life easy. Scrolling down through here, these are all little things they did. Hide the speed test for WAN 2. I don't know if that's really a feature improvement. It seems like someone might want that on there. Um, but hey, these are some of the things on there. And I've never been a big fan of their way they do the dashboard itself. Matter of fact, let's go back and look at that dashboard because when you're here and we go back over to the dashboard here, there's something a little confusing in the top corner. This is actually something Riley pointed out to me and I tested it here. I assumed when I see network version 454 with Linux 9409, I'm like, huh, that's odd. It's running Linux, but where does it pull that number for? Oh, wait, I'm on Chrome version 94. 
Um, then I realized with Riley, when he sent me a screenshot, he was doing it on a Mac. It shows a Mac OS there. And uh, we tried it here in a Windows machine at the office and it shows the Windows OS here. For some reason, they pull the user agent that you're using and put that in a corner. And I don't know why. I, I really don't like this uh interface much i don't get it i don't understand what they're trying to achieve here it's not near as intuitive easy to use as when we go back to the normal interface so get rid of and deactivate go back to our dashboard here hey look we have things that look a little bit better matter of fact i added some of those new features they had like the wi-fi interference or here's your port uh passive 24 volt we have two of them uh we have 37 out of 114, no, no PoE, and active 24 out of 73 PoE plus ports. Like, this is a little bit better information. And in the new UI, it's just confusing how all that works. It's one of those uh, things that I don't really understand or completely get. Um, capacity versus draw. So you're looking at your power budgets on here. These are things that are not bad. Some of this stuff is not super clear because they give you like the Wi-Fi experience for each of the clients and statistics, but they're not, eh, not all that great overall. But hey, at least you're working on it slowly and surely. Now we get down to the fixes. There's a whole lot of little fixes in here for all kinds of little things. Like I said, I'll leave the list here. Uh, nothing's really, they're, they're like typos and they're uh, fix adoption issues with ULT devices. These aren't things I have to even test here at the office. So there's nothing I can really say what was wrong with before. But hey, you may have had some of these problems. That's why it's reading through the list. Now, one thing they did I thought was really cool. I've always liked the mapping system they had right here. But it hasn't gotten love lately. At least I thought it didn't until I looked to see they made some more changes to it and realized that, oh, that's right. They're only giving it some love over here under the new user interface. Let's go ahead and apply. Then we're going to go back over to the topology. And this is where they updated the display option. Specifically, they added the status. So you can filter for the status of whether or not these are online, offline, um, show your 2.4 gigahertz clients, show your 5 gigahertz clients, show your wired clients and make the interface unusable again. I kind of wish they had better filtering where you could filter for a specific client to show the topology of something, but it's all or nothing. They still could do a lot better on this, but if you're looking not for clients, but for the devices, um, and be able to do this. I think this is pretty cool because now I can at least quickly get a topology change, see how things are working on there. And by clicking on any of these switches, I can go to the settings of the switch and actually edit things on there. Well, that broke it. Well, that still needs work because that wasn't supposed to disappear. Let me reload the page and... All right, go back and go back to it. Okay, it's working again now. So I thought I could edit from there. It seems like you should be able to. Let's see if that breaks it again. Okay, we found a bug. <laughs> I didn't see that last time. So I see what it's doing up here. It's actually trying to get me right to the port. So if we do this, that didn't fix it either. I'll click on topology. All right, topology works. So it brings up the window so we can edit this, but doesn't actually let us change this. It lets it work on this, but don't try and change a port in there, apparently. You're watching this in real time. Maybe from someone from Unify is watching this too. Now, another weird thing while we're here is if we go over to networks, and we only show the one network, but we have the ability to add other networks. Also, this particular spot is where you can choose routers. Even though I don't have a router, router is what it gives to devices that support layer three. So the LabRack Gen 2, the Studio Lab uh, 10G, and the uh, Unify Aggravation Switch, each one of these do support the layer three routing. Now, this is where things get a little bit confusing because, well, it's not still not great. I have did a video talking about this before. I'll even link to a video recently done by Cody from Mac Telecom Networks, who also did a video on this and showed a few options you can do and how you actually have to go to the command line to manage any of the settings that you put in here. So you can create it here, but the management is still done from the command line, like for rules and uh, access lists, which is weird that they don't have any UI for that. But we have to go to advanced features when you're in the new UI, which you're going to hit leave. Then we get to see all my actual VLANs I have created and things like that. I'm not sure why they split that up in different places because when you go back over to the uh, classic, so we'll switch real quick back to here, back to this interface, deactivate settings, networks. Hey, they're all right here. And if I want to create a network, 
no problem. I can just choose things like, hey, we're going to go VLAN only, and I only need it to do VLAN. Now, we do this a lot because we're not using any of the Unify routing equipment, so we'll define the VLANs in whichever router we're using, PFSense, Untangle, whichever one, and then we'll also define them here across the equipment to be able to propagate the VLAN and then assign it to the ports as needed through the UI here. Um, I'm not sure why they make it kind of difficult when you're going back and forth between the new one, but hey, that's how they chose to do it. Now, like I said, there's a lot of little bug fixes in there, and I'm not going to walk through every single one of them. I just wanted to show some of the highlights, show that, yes, the update worked, which is obviously the first and most important part that I said in the beginning of the video, because we had a lot of issues prior where you would do the update and things would just break. When they made some changes to the way they do like AP groups and things like that, there were major changes in some of those previous versions, which is what led to those problems. No such major changes were made, so... So far, we haven't noticed anything different. Things were kind of, for the most part, left in the same place as they were uh, with the 6.2 series and the 6.4 series now. So you're not in a uh, mode where you have to learn a bunch of changes in the UI. I also recommend staying up to date because you don't want to be too many versions behind because there are gaps. You can't go from too old of a controller all the way to 6.4. Unify has that broken down in notes. They have like what versions you can skip to. And we have had to help people with this. And it's a tedious process of loading the same controller um, that they have and then taking that backup file they might have and then putting it through each version until you get all the way up to the latest version so they can run it because you can't take a backup file from a really old version and immediately put it into the newest version. Uh, sometimes there's at least subversions in between depending on the age. You don't want to be caught up in any of that. So I do recommend staying up on the latest version of this. I'll leave links to everything down below in the forum post that I mentioned. And of course, um, you know, follow uh, Hostify because they do tweet out when they start migrating more of their servers over and how many they've tweeted over. That will be some updates that come if you're so nervous and you don't says, you know, you don't want to just trust Tom saying that it's okay to upgrade. Plus, I may not have the same use case as you. So as always, before you do these updates, make sure you have a backup and a plan to restore back to the previous version. If you find a scenario that doesn't work for you or an edge case uh, that causes the migration to fail when you do the update. But overall, I haven't had any problems running it. It seems to work quite smooth. So want to share the information and links are all down below to everything else. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there is a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.